What's up guys, David here, one, two, and two, and it's list day. Ah, yes, it's list day, and uh, given the last video was our worst cards in 2018, I think this video is gonna be the best cards in 2018. Now, uh, and I think I mentioned this last video, This I thought this was gonna be a lot easier than it was because, you know, the sets have been kind of mediocre. That uh, When I say this year, I mean 2018, even though this is coming out in 2019. The sets this year have been uh, kind of mediocre. Most of the archetypes coming out were particularly too impactful, and most of the best decks right now are built of cards that have been around forever, like Rongo and things like that. Well, I guess T-Dragons is pretty good, and that's a newer deck. But for the most part, the best cards that came out this year are actually generic tech cards, as opposed to, like, you know, whole archetypes and things like that. So, that actually made it kind of difficult because there was a lot more than 10 of them. So, if your favorite card is not on the list and or a honorable mention, then it's probably just because it was one of the 10 cards next to the other 14 cards that I put on this list. So, like, you know, they were all fighting for, for, for spots. And the thing that was really cool about this set was uh, you could probably make an argument for any one of these cards being the number one card of the year because they're all extremely good. So I really had to uh, just kind of be... <laughs> I had to kind of make an executive decision and just and just put them in an order. As always, thank you for my Discord for helping me out with this. You guys help with every one of my lists. And if you guys want to get in on that stuff, just make sure you join the Discord. Or, uh, you know, sometimes I post things on the Facebook, things like that. And if you really want your opinion to be heard, there is always the Patreon. Without further ado, let's get started with the best cards of 2018, starting at number 10. Number 10 is Dino Wrestler Prank It Top. Prank It, Prank It, I swear to God, all these Yu-Gi-Oh card names are just like, they take just syllables and put them out of a, in like a pachinko machine and just bling, 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 pank, bling, 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 gratops. Dino Wrestler Pank you want to say Prank Gratops, but it's Pank whatever. This level seven Earth Dinosaur has 2,600 attack and zero defense with the following effect. If your opponent controls more monsters than you do, you can special summon this card from your hand. Kind of. Kind of like Cyber Dragon, except for the fact that you can have monsters as long as they are less than your opponents, which is, that's a, that's a pretty easy condition to meet. You can only special summon one of these guys this turn th this way, but that, that's fine. Once per turn, as a quick effect, you can tribute one dinosaur monster you control to target one card on the field and destroy it. The card needs to be one of your opponent's cards, but besides that, that's really the only stipulation, which means this thing is an excellent source of spot removal, even though it is a targeted destruction. And if you manage to special summon it, that means it has a target, right? Because your opponent has more cards than you do, meaning they must have cards. So the things like when it's live, it's it always going to get something. And then you can chain it to things like bottomless or things, so it's a little bit hard to stop as well. Overall, it's a great side deck card and probably one of the best, just, you know, like, you know, splashable cards we got this year, even though it is part of an archetype, technically speaking. But, you know, you know what I mean. Number nine is Heavy Metal Foes Electromite. Ah, here we go, Electromite. Back when Rule Set 4 came out, they uh, pretty much neutered pendulums with a serious thousand degree knife by moving the pendulum zones from their own spots into the back row of the uh, number one and number five trap zones, as well as saying that anything Pendulum Summoned from the extra deck falls under the extra deck summon blanket of needing an open extra deck zone in order to be played to the field, like uh, either by a link monster or just going to your one extra deck zone that you start off with. Both of those changes really, really, really hit Pendulums very hard, but did a good job of balancing the mechanic out and making it probably work more the way it was intended than it was working like when it was during Pet Bay or something like that. But in order to balance those massive hits to the pendulum mechanic we got this card right here this beautiful link monster made pendulum decks actually really really good again despite the rule changes that occurred with the institution of master rule 4. this psychic link 2 fire monster with uh, 1800 attack is made with two pendulum monsters that's it so it's not stuck in uh, metal foes it's you can make this in any pendulum deck which was important especially for Pendulum Magicians. When this thing is Link Summoned, you can take any Pendulum Monster from your deck and stick it in your extra deck face up. The second effect is that you can destroy one card on the field to add one Pendulum Monster from your extra deck to your hand. So basically, effectively searching the card that you pulled out of your deck. If a card or cards in your Pendulum Zone leaves your Pendulum Zone, you can draw one card. <laughs> Holy crap. You can only use this effect of Heavy Metal Foes Electromite once per turn. Poor turn? Why do I keep saying that? Obviously this card is absolutely fantastic, it searches cards, it draws you cards, it's 
basically opening two more zones you can pendulum summon to. It's really exactly what you would need in order to fight a drastic rule change to your whole mechanic. Uh, and the fact that uh, he dies to things like Ghost Ogre means that if you really want to go ham with your pendulums, uh, you need to watch out for them ham traps. Those ham traps. This is what happens when your heater is relentless. It's like in 90 degrees in here and I have a window open and it's winter. <sighs> Overall, a fantastic card that's very well balanced, especially now that it's at one. So there you go. All the Pendulum decks can now be happy, but not be too crazy and make everyone else unhappy. Number eight is Thunder Dragon Colossus. Ooh, yes. Thunder Dragon's boss monster one of two is on the list as well. Must be fusion summoned, they have their own fusion spell for thunder dragons, or special summoned the turn that you used a thunder dragon's effect in the hand by distributing one effect thunder non-fusion monster <laughs> from your field. <laughs> that sounds a lot more complicated than it actually is. In thunder dragons they all have hand effects and they're all thunders and effects so it's very easy to get this thing on, on the board. It, it's kind of stupidly easy to get this thing on the board, especially with some summon summoner thing. Some summer f whatever. Cards cannot be added from the main deck to your opponent's hand, making him a giant walking 2600 beat stick with a mistake effect. That's one-sided, making your opponent have a very hard time dealing with him because you have to search your outs to him, which you can't do, meaning if you can't deal with him with the cards you currently own, uh, then you are going to have a bad day. And if you manage to be able to destroy him with a card effect like Regeki or beat over him with a monster like, I don't know, <laughs> Fossil Dino with Moon Mirror Shield, you can banish one Thunder Monster from your graveyard in order to keep this thing alive. It can't be destroyed. That is a pain in the butt. Obviously this card is a fantastic boss monster, a walking mistake really does floodgate a lot of decks, and the fact that it has an inherent protection against destruction of any kind means that your opponent's gonna have to go out of their way to, you know, deal with this thing in other ways, and because the mill's the most accessible uh, extra deck monster right now that we all use to get rid of other extra deck monsters would be like Nightmare Cerberus, uh, who is a destruction, you're gonna find that you're gonna miss, like, Castell the Sky Blasting Musketeer a hell of a lot more than you ever thought you would. Now he's on here in instead of Titan because I figured Titan, while a very good monster, Colossus is really the problem because, you know, Titan's effect is okay, but you can chain block it, so whatever. So, Colossus, next! Number seven is Altergeist Multi-Faker. Ah, yeah, pretty much the only reason why Altergeist is a really solid, I high tier 2, almost tier 1 deck, is because of this bad boy right here who gave the deck a massive jump in consistency and power ceiling. If you activate a trap card, you can special summon this card from your hand. If this card was special summoned, you can special summon one Altergeist monster from your deck. Holy crap. Pretty much all of Altergeist's cards that aren't monsters are trap cards, so you're going to be activating lots of trap cards this turn, which is really neat. And unlike Paleos, which are also a trap-based back row deck, which deal with activating trap cards, Multifaker doesn't miss timing. If you use something like a counter trap card, he just activates as a new chain after the counter trap card resolves. So that's like, you know, really stupidly good. The turn you use his effects, you can't summon any other cards except Altergeist cards, but you know, you're, you're not really running any, so that's really kind of a non-issue. You're just make Hextia anyway, so whatever, or Soikidus and leave it on board and bounce something. Next. This card is really, really dumb, and it's pretty much the, the one thing you want to hit if you're playing uh, against Altergeist. This card is stupid. But, like I said, he's one of the best cards that came out this year, simply because he gave that deck such a humongous power boost, it was ridiculous. Number six is Sky Striker Mobilize Engage! Now you might be wondering to yourself, how is a searchable pot of greed not number one this year? Well, if you wanted to tell me that you wanted this card to be number one, I really, really wouldn't argue with you because you're right. It's a humongous swing of advantage and it's extremely searchable and it's like not a hard ones per turn, right? No, it's not. It's just that, like I said, every other card this year that's on this list is freaking stupid. And I guess if you want to take in the modern band limited list into account, 
The fact that uh, Horn of Bits is at one makes this card a little bit less splashable and more stuck in the deck it was meant for. If you control no monsters in your main monster zone, you can add one Sky Striker card from your deck to your hand. If you have three or more spell cards in your graveyard while this card is resolving, you can also draw one card from your deck, which is why people say this is like a searchable version of Pot of Greed, because it gets you a card from the search and then draws you a card, so it is a plus one. Although it can be arguably better than Pot of Greed in a lot of cases, because one of those cards is guaranteed to be the card that you actually want, the other one is just a funzy rando to get you extra advantage. But like I said, with the Horn of Bits getting stuck to one, he is now less splashable as an engine in other decks, as like a draw engine as well as a link engine, and is more just relegated to being the absolute powerhouse of an advantage gatherer for the Sky Striker deck. Which is kind of why it's as high on the list, I guess. I don't know. I could not figure out a good place to put this card because it's either really, really good or really, really bad right now. Like. Well, not really bad, but not as good as it used to be. So it's like, ugh. <laughs> it's really hard to place. So I put it right in the middle, because why not? Summon Sorceress. Aha, the European TCG guys now finally have access to this card, so you too guys can know just how broken Summon Sorceress actually is. If this card is Link Summoned, you can special summon one card from your hand to a Link Zone this card points to that is on your opponent's side of the field. Why would you ever want to just give your opponent a monster from your hand? Well, its second effect has the following effect that if this card is pointing to another monster, you can special summon one monster from your deck in defense position that is the same type as the monster this thing is pointing to, but its effects are negated. Who really cares? You can only use your effect once per turn. What do you freaking do? You don't always have to give your opponent's monster have this thing to have something to point to in order to get that second effect off, but it is really nice that there is a way to do that that is just, you know, stupidly easy to do. And in some cases, giving your opponent a monster is actually like a good thing. If you drew that Ibly, you know, in your opening hand, you just give them, give them to right, right to them right now, so you don't have to worry about it, like, you know, going later. Mm. Or like a dupe frog, crash into it. I don't know, seems good to me. Her biggest advantage is being a part of a bunch of different wombo combos, basically being able to tutor a card out of the deck. However, um, I, I'm not sure what I want to have happen to her because she's really cool in the deck that she works in but she can lead to some seriously annoying combos, so I don't know what to do with her. Plus, she's really cute. Who knows? Overall, a really good card, a fantastic Link 3, and uh, one of the best cards we've ever gotten this year. Number four is Nightmare Goblin. Now, you could probably put any of the Nightmares in this slot. They're all really, really good for really different reasons. They're all fantastic Link monsters. And the fact that they all draw you and discard you cards makes them just cycle through your deck and get to other things for you to continue to use for Link material. So they are overall just a fantastic set of extra deck cards. And their arrows are fantastic. They are built for extra linking. But I figured Goblin being the banned one, he'll be the mascot for the whole series on the list. As well as, you know, this effect is really good. So he is arguably the best one anyway, although Unicorn's also really good. So I don't know, I love Griffin too. But anyway, what does Goblin do? Did somebody say goblins? If this card was Link Summoned during your turn, you can discard one card. If this card is co-linked to something else, you can then draw a card. And if you did this, during this turn, you get an extra normal summon to a zone this card points to. <laughs> it's an extra deck monster you can summon from your extra deck for a generic two monsters, as long as they have different names, that bestows you a double summon. That is so dumb. No wonder he's broken. <laughs> I mean, think of all the crap you gotta go to to get Seraphonite, Knight, and she does exactly the same thing. Uh, you have to run Brilliant Fusion, you have to draw the Brilliant Fusion, you have to not draw the Garnet, and half the time you're running a bunch of searchers in one Garnet, so you know, it's, it's, it's easy to brick, and that stupid Brilliant Fusion stays on your board, and clogs everything up. Like, there's a lot of shenanigans you gotta do to get that extra double summon, you know, and a monster with Brilliant Fusion, but nah, Goblin's like pretty much freezies, so that's ridic. Did I just say ridic? So basically, you know, you stick him right in the middle zone and you just keep going and going and going like the Energizer Buddy until you, you link your opponent and then they don't have any way of playing because you have an unbreakable board. Oh, did I mention that if he ends up in your, like, co-link line at the end of the combo you don't make use him to make something else, anything that is co-linked to him or through the chain, uh, that that your no players can target them. So he pretty much bestows your U-Link with a bunch of non-targeting protection, which is... <laughs> he doesn't even need to do that to be good, but that, that puts him way over. This card's fantastic. 
Number three is old. The uh, two tales of the noble knights. I uh, I'd be very surprised if you guys thought she wouldn't be on the list because she's absolutely fantastic, despite not being a very generic link too. She's made of two warriors, which you think would be a big pain in the butt, except when you remember the warriors are one of the most supported types in the game. So uh, we have things like uh, the hornet bits thing I mentioned earlier, shrimp marsala warrior with your insta fusion, as well as a couple other things that are just easy warrior monsters to get on the board in order to give yourself a nifty little link starting engine. But uh, why would you want to run warriors in your deck unless you're just running Goku, Goku, Gokus? You're running Gokus. Gokis? <laughs> then you're just running warriors anyway. Why would you want to do that? Well, when she's Link Summoned, you can add one warrior monster from your deck to your hand. You can't set or summon or special summon or activate the effects of a monster with that name this turn, but you do get a free uh, plus one when she hits the board. Also, you can set any number of quit spells from your graveyard to special summon one warrior monster from your deck whose level equals the number of equip spells you dumped out of your deck. Obviously, if you have a level one, like that Goki Octa Stretch thing, then you only have to dump one the only one you'll ever need. And you're gonna get all of your combos just keep going and going and going. Seems like link spamming is really good this year, unless you lose Firewall Dragon. So just free advantage and graveyard setup that this thing bestows upon like the Gokis, for instance, is ridiculous. Also, it does a disservice not to mention how good this card actually is in Noble Knights. It actually makes that deck semi-playable. No, I know it's not the greatest deck in the world, but she does like stupid things for that deck. And I think that's very underappreciated for people who don't actually play Noble Knights. She is perfect for the deck. She just needed to be made of two Noble Knights, not two Warriors, and then she'd be fine. But instead, she's really, really, really broke. <laughs> Nexties. But a lot of people thought this would be number one. Infinite Impermanence. Ah, yes. If you control no cards, you can activate this card from your hand. <laughs> it's a real hand trap. Target one face of a monster your opponent controls. Its effects are negated for the turn. Then, here's the kicker. If this card was set before it was activated, as you just went through the effort of playing it like a real trap card, you can negate all the spell and traps in the column in which this card was in that your opponent has as well, meaning you get a little bit of a bonus effect from this, which, uh... At, uh, at Jersey Regionals last weekend, some guy turned off my mistake and negated my monster. Oh, it felt bad, man. Overall, this card is absolutely ridiculous. It deserves a very high spot on the list. You could even argue for being number one. However, I do believe the next card on the list, that's not an honorable mention, is actually well more deserving of it, only because I really, really like it. It's... This one's for me, boys. But before we get to number one, I do have a few honorable mentions. First up are all the power rank four, rank four, link fours. That is Gumblar, Boral Sword, and Skaldred. These guys are all awesome. Gumblar knocks cards out of your opponent's hand, Skaldred puts cards into your hand, and uh, Boral Sword hits your opponent with the biggest in Yu-Gi-Oh. They take a ton of resources to make, but their effects are absolutely broken, but uh, I figured you kind of need to build your deck around making giant link monsters in order to make these guys, and without Firewall Dragon that got a little bit harder. I mean, we still have Scapegoat, I guess. But uh, I don't think they're really the best cards that came out this year. They're just really, really good link monsters. But you gotta remember, they're made of potentially four different monsters. They're a neg three to make, potentially. So like, they better have good effects. I'm, I'm not going to dump all these resources into making something that's, you know, an 1800 beater with a battle protection or something cruddy like that. No, if I'm going to dump all these monsters and, and link climb and all this other crap, I want them to be good. So I think they're totally fair, especially because we don't have Firewall Dragon anymore. <laughs> Next up is Ghost Bell. I think she's a really, really good hand trap, you know, negating anything that's fiddling with the grave, making her a hand trap version of, I guess, like, Necro Valley, basically. She never saw a lot of main deck play, unlike Ash Blossom, so she's clearly not that great, because negating your opponent's fiddling with their deck is normally probably better than negating their fiddling with the graveyard, because they're fiddling with the graveyards like in the middle of their combo, and they've already kind of set up a little bit, so it's not as an impactful hit, it just may stop one small play. However, against certain decks, like my Paleos, she is actually particularly powerful, so, you know, she is what she is, she's a great side deck card, but because she didn't see tons of main deck play, I thought she's a good honorable mention, but not a, not a crazy, you know, high entry on the list or something like that. She's not honorable mention, though. She's very good. 
And last is Danger, 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 Danger Suchinoko. Don't step on Snack. Ah, you're gonna say, but Dave, Snack is so good. How could he possibly be bad? Well, he is very good. However, he doesn't really do anything. He's just a level three that special summons itself. Sure, you either get to discard his card and then special summon himself and draw a card, or you just discard him and then special summon him like you. Either way, you special summon him. Is that amazing? Yes, he's a very good card. He's like a spicy tour guide or something. Kinda, kinda. But really, he's just a cruddy body on board for Link spamming or going into Dante. He's not like, he doesn't hit the board and do a ton of crazy crap. He's just a good extender. So, I don't think he's one of the best cards this year. He's probably one of the best danger cards and he's ridiculously versatile and very good. So saying that he's bad or not a great card is a completely ridiculous disservice to the card. It's just, I think he's outclassed by everything else, but he is still extremely good. And before we get to number one, obviously it's uh, it's it's the MetaMats plug. If you guys want a custom clause playmat, use my promo code TROLLTHEMETA to get you like 10% off. And uh, make sure in, in like the order, if there's like a, an area where you can like plug in like instructions or something, yell at Dave for the body pillows. We need those, we need those meta mat body pillows. Stick them in the comments. Just say the words, Ria's Gremory body pillow now, and I'll tally them up. And when we get a hundred of those, then, uh, then he'll have to do it. My number one best card this year is called by the grave now you're gonna say what how is this card above impermanence dave you're dumb and I, that might be true i i just really like this card well what does it do it is a quick play spell Ooh, that's a good start though target one monster in your opponent's graveyard banish it and then if you do until the end of the next turn next turn any cards with that same names effects are negated now if i need to explain to you why that card is really really good then you sir need to watch my learning Yu-Gi-Oh series because you need to learn some Yu-Gi-Oh. the fact that this card runs as a simultaneously as a dd crow as well as like a breakthrough skill is absolutely ridiculous i can't tell you how many times uh, my opponent had a card in their grave that was the same one as on the field and I actually managed to banish the card from the graveyard to turn off the card on the field. That is ridiculously useful. And the fact that it's also just at worst a DD Crow means you can use it to chain things in order to stop your opponent from let's say monster boarding a card from the grave. <laughs> and, and the one, the one pinnacle effect that makes this card just way over the edge is that hand traps like Ash Blossom discard themselves for cost. You could then chain this card as it is a spell speed two, banish the discarded for cost Ash Blossom, and then for the rest of the turn and next turn, all Ash Blossom's effects are negated, including the one that was just discarded, meaning this card can negate hand traps. This card is so stupidly versatile, it was a staple in most decks at two and three when it was at two and then when it was back to three or before when it was at three. Because if you were playing something like Go Keys and you wanted to swarm, you didn't want your opponent Ash Blossoming and Ghost Ogring and Droll in locking you until you can't do anything, so you would run just three copies of this, hope you open one in order to make your Wombo Combo Explodey you link board absolutely safe from your opponent's hand trap. So that means their turn is gonna stink. Which actually might be why this card was put to two for a little while this year, because uh, they thought it would actually hurt those Linky Spam decks by making uh, hand traps more impactful to those decks. However, all it did was hurt everyone pretty bad because everyone is I mean, a lot of decks don't like getting hit with ash blossom most decks hate it and like rogue decks really hate it you pretty much lose to it because you need that one search <laughs> so uh not having this card at your disposal really just kind of hurts like every deck and it really stinks i love this card this card is so stupidly versatile it's not even funny and i think it's honestly one of the best cards ever been printed much less the best card this year but if you don't agree with me that's perfectly fine However, that was the list. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. And remember, if you don't troll the meta, who will? I will see you guys for uh, the next list video. Is probably gonna get back to the uh, the best set of the game stuff. So uh, whatever that GX set is after the last one we did, I don't remember. It's been a few weeks. <laughs> remember to subscribe so that you don't miss any of my totally rad dueling. Watching more of these videos is almost as fine as Taya's ass. What? I'm not saying that.
fine. Then it's time to duel. 